the thing's leaking bad somewhere. And just like an engine, but probably more critical on this than rebuilding an engine is you want to get it clean. I got to get this arm off the side of it. It was impossible to get while it was on the machine. So I'm going to get that off there, get this thing cleaned up a little bit, drain the oil out of it, and then we could start taking the thing apart. Okay, the first thing I want to do here, get this pump off the top of it and see if I can drain some of that fluid out of it. These things were on there pretty tight. So let me get that. All right, let's take this off and see what it looks like. Our dots are on the top of it, facing upwards, so we're going to make a note of that. So everything over there. Got this little spring. Then on our magnetic bar, and there's a little bearing down in there. Let's see if that'll come out. We'll worry about that later. I'm going to pop the top off of it here. Okay, this is a 10 millimeter. And man, them's on there tight. Let's see if my torque wrench will do it. It broke loose. You're not supposed to use a torque wrench like this, but that's all I got. Oh my god. A few moments later. Ah! Ouch. Holy crap. I'm gonna take a break. Get them bolts out of there. This thing should raise up. Spring loaded. Here it comes. And we're just going to pop that off of there. Do a quick look see. The bearing just now fell out of it. Here's that little bearing that was down in there. And everything looks okay so far. Set that there. And we'll flip this over and get the rest of that oil out of it. I'm going to hold on to that. Okay, we'll take this plate off. And when I take the piston out, I'm going to turn it upside down and just let it fall out like this. You can see the bearing come out with it. That way all my little pistons don't fall out in the process. And then there's my swash plate. We'll pull that out. It looks good. This comes off of the side of it in here was right there. We'll take this seal out of the bottom of it. It's got a snap ring. Get that off of there. It's a tough one too. We're gonna tap on this and just push it out, bearing and all. There we go. And we can just slide the seal off of it. Get that back here in our scrap pile. On the side is a shaft connected to that little square block inside that moves the swash plate back and forth. It controls the speed, forward, and reverse. 
Here I'm removing the clip that secures the seal in place. The shaft rides on a brass bearing and you don't want to damage it. Take a piece of fine sandpaper and remove all the rust and rough spots off of the shaft. Do this before you try pushing it through that brass sleeve. The shaft should slide out with very little effort. Taking the shaft out makes removing and replacing this seal much easier. It's going to come out right from the inside here, like that. We'll just get up under that seal like that, pop it out. Throw it in our scrap pile. So my next step is to get this thing cleaned up spotless and then I could start putting it back together again. There's a new O-ring for your neutral valve. The only relief valve that I could get out, there's an O-ring for that. So I'm gonna put that one on there. We'll start putting this thing back together. Okay, there's that one. You can see these things, man, they're like flatter than a pancake and hard as a rock. Go ahead and put this back in there. Go in there like that. And my neutral valve. There we go. This next step is kind of important. You need to install the small seal and clip on the side and slide the rocker shaft through it before you put anything else in the case. It will only fit now. If you install the long shaft first, you won't be able to put it in. Push the seal in with your thumbs till it bottoms out. The clip on the other hand, you have to take your time with. It's kind of difficult and I don't know any easy way to do it. Make sure you line it up in the center and that all the fingers are bending at the same time as it goes down. It's crucial because this clip keeps this seal from popping out. The seal has a double lip and fits very tight around that shaft. When feeding the shaft through it, I had to give it a little help with a pick, being very careful not to damage it, and to help it around the outside edge of the shaft. Now we can install the long drive shaft. Oil everything up and slide the seal over the drive shaft and up to the bearing. You should be able to push everything down with your thumbs, but you may have to jiggle the shaft a little bit to work the bearing down. Install the clip. Flip it over. Give the end of the shaft a few light taps to seat the seal lightly against the clip. On the inside, we have our little square block that's going to go on that lever down there. A little oil on it. And what that does, it slides into this cradle, which is rounded on the bottom and it rocks it forward or reverse. Go ahead and put this in there. These two races, there's one thicker than the other. You want to put the thinner of the two down in the cradle. We're going to drop the bearing in there. Oil it up a little bit. Get a little bit of oil down there on those pads. And it's a tight squeeze getting in there. Just have to turn that little block around like that. in there put our thicker of the two on the top just like that you 
have a washer. Just drop that on there like that. You have a spring. Drop that on there like that. We're going to oil up our piston. It's all cleaned up, ready to go. And there's two ways you can do this. What I like to do, <clears throat> so take a paper towel, just poke it around that. And we'll take my piston, put it in the paper towel like this, flip it upside down, slide it over the shaft. And I'm just going to pull it out of there like that. And make sure I didn't leave any down in there. I'm good to go. From here forward until we install it on the machine, we want to keep the pump in an upright position. Because at this point, we're filling it with some hydrofluid. I've got this one standing on a cup from a laundry detergent bottle. Fill the outside case to about a quarter of an inch from the top, then fill all the little pistons until they're full. When you push the piston block down, it'll squirt some oil back out. Push the block down until it's level with the top of that case, then let it spring back up. We want it to be as full as it can be when we compress that top manifold down to it. Put a little oil on the housing gasket or o-ring and then place it into the groove. Oil up the valve plate, make sure the word up is facing up and mount it over the piston block and align it with the two alignment pins. Lubricate the face of the end cap or manifold and mount it to the assembly. Line up and start finger tightening the four bolts. Squeeze the two pieces together by hand while tightening the bolts as you go until it makes contact with the gasket. Once they're down snug, Torque them at 180 inch pounds or 23.3 newton meters. Oil and install the two pump gears on the shaft. The dots on their face should be facing upwards. Don't forget the plastic ball bearing and the spring. Ball goes in the hole first and the spring on top of it. Oil the inside of the charge pump and install a new O-ring. Bolt the cover down lightly with two quarter inch hex bolts. Don't torque them yet. We're going to loosen them up in the next step. We're ready to put the pump back in the mower. Okay, I got the reservoir full, the thing's mounted, all my pipes and hoses are hooked up. And the last thing we need to do here is get the air out of it. You saw that I had already filled the pump partially, and the instructions will tell you to turn this one and a half turns. So there's one and a half that way. I don't know if I'll be able to spin this one around, but I'll try. There's a half. There's a one, and there's another half. And we want it to fill the top half of this up. And you'll see the oil flowing out of it. Looks like there's already some. You can see some air bubbles. And it could take a while. This process can take 20 to 30 minutes or longer. With a pressure pump, 
you could put up to five pounds of pressure in the reservoir. This will move things along a lot quicker. It's not recommended to completely change the fluid in this system, but you do need to put a new filter on it. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for purging the air from the hydraulic system on your particular model. They can differ. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some good information out of it. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button on the way out and support my channel. Got a lot of videos up there. I got a lot more coming. Ring that notification bell and get notified as soon as I put them up there. Remember to stay safe in the shop. Wear your safety glasses, gloves, whatever it takes. And have fun. Thank you for watching.